Some of the values are taught at a young age, or like most things we're taught, um, and we may be taught the wrong values, but the fact you can understand that and people change, right? We, depends. Other people are taught the right values from the, the day they were born. So they have it a bit easier up front, but it doesn't mean to say they have it all their own way and the others don't have it. And I know a lot of people have, have really had a struggle through their early life if they turn out to be great leaders. And some of them great because of the experiences they've had, being on the, on the worst side of the fence, if you know what I mean, you know, like uh, disruptive family households, so you can't use that as an excuse. It can be, it's a factor, but not a truth. Hello and welcome to the Honest Talk by Freak folks. I'm Harsh Pandey. For this particular session, our guest will be Mr. Ruh Shwan sir, who is here with us. He's a perceptive, responsive and accessible consultant, coach and trainer with broad experience in varied industries worldwide, including financial service, construction, energy, logistic, distribution, retail, engineering, hospitality, airline and manufacturing. He is also a dynamic speaker with outstanding skills in leadership, communication, presentation, training, team building, and interpersonal skills. He is a co-founder and CEO of Soul Inspired Leadership. So, first of all, sir, I welcome you to in this session. Thank you so much for joining and agreeing to share your thoughts with us. Thank you, Harsh. My pleasure to have a chat with you. Thank you so much, sir. It's our Looking pleasure. To it. So, moving to the topic Looking of today's session, which we have chosen is a new age demand new leadership. A new way of working has emerged from the post-industrial age into a digital one and with it the new need for new leadership. So what are your views on the demanding leadership of this new age? How will it going to be? Well, it's, it's interesting you say a new leadership. I mean, leadership doesn't change in reality. It takes the same uh, knowledge, skill, competency really to lead people as it did 100 years ago. What's changed is the context and what is changing now to, to, to still be successful as a leader, as a leader is that you've got to be aware of the, the, the continual change um, contextually. And one of those, as you mentioned, is digital, digital, right? Uh, particularly it's been heightened by the uh, current COVID situation that's forced people uh, or forced companies into the digital space they had it probably planned but it's they've had to really hasten their journey down that down that path right because it, it's just meant one minute they weren't digital next minute they are otherwise they wouldn't survive so so but that's the context it's not about but leaders just got to be leadership's just got to be aware and good leaders are aware that they need to be a, be very very conscious of the environment around them and change accordingly um probably the only like there's one thing that's probably heightened see that things just get heightened a little bit more the emphasis gets more in certain areas i mean connect leaders to connect with people was never never uh, something you didn't do well you may not have done it years ago but good leaders did it just means now it's more heightened that you need to be more aware and attuned to, to people and what they're going through because a lot of people are going through some pretty rough periods and digitally on the digit, digital side that helps you actually connect if you can't connect face to face and then and, and, and there lies what we're doing you're interviewing me over zoom where you know go back three years and you probably wouldn't have we probably wouldn't have done that, you know. That just it's changed the way we look at things. So, um, anything, anyone want to comment or? Indeed, sir. Uh, sir, as you have told, the business world has changed dramatically over the last few decades, and now we we'll now live in a connected society where change can be fast-paced, constant, and unpredictable. 
Rapid advances in the technology have created an environment where the internet, the smartphone, and the social media are ambiguous. And the 2008 global financial crisis and 2020 pandemic has increased the sense of turbulence, danger, and unpredictability in certain areas. So, in your opinion, what critical skills are required to excel in this fast-changing world? Look, I just think you need to be you need to be tuned into it. I often often see uh, um, the really good the really good leaders are attuned into their environment. I mean, they're they're connected with it. Some just live in a world. The ones who find struggle, they live in a world of their own, in their own little headspace. They don't, you know, if they have to connect with other people, they do. When you twist their arm, that they just don't. And they, they they tend to react to the world based on what they think other people might want them to react or not want them to react. Well, whatever motivates them. But but in essence, to to be really um, sort of, I think just meeting the challenges of the current environment and the way the way the world changes now, you've just got to be connected to it, but connected with, with your gut, connected with your heart. I mean, you've got to feel people's passion, feel people's pain, and, and, and in that, acknowledge what's changing you around you, not just seeing things in a very um, black and white sort of... Okay movie picture but see things in full cinema color you know what i mean like it's you got to just get a feel for what's going on um and, and a lot of that is and all good leadership comes back to it is you need to understand yourself before you can understand others and to understand others is the key now more more so than ever the, to me digit the digital space is a tool but the actual it, it helps you connect connect with your your, your other people, your customers, uh, stake, all stakeholders in the business, the digital space helps you connect a bit more effectively and efficiently, right? Now, I wouldn't, well, efficiently sometimes, not so efficient other times, but certainly effectively. Um, I'll rephrase that again. Efficiently, yes, all the time. Effectively, not always. You need to be sometimes with people to be more effective in that because you need to feel the energy. But, but there again, if you, if you understand these things, you feel and you read that. People who are just in their head, it just goes whizzes, whizzes past them. And that's, that's, and to me, that's the challenge now is to just be connected re in, in, real, in reality. Now, first doing that, you've got to be really connected with yourself. You've got to really understand yourself. And as, once you really understand yourself, then you start to, open up a whole world of understanding other people. Executives I coach, uh, I'm coaching them because their leadership is a bit below par, a bit substandard. So they've asked me to come in to sort of improve them, right? And that's one of the things. They just don't get a feel for people. Uh, they, they sort of compete in their head. It's like, I'm better than that person or they're better than me or, right, I'm going to do it this way to have that impact on that person. They don't they don't actually connect with people uh, with any true empathy and understanding. That makes sense? Indeed, sir. Yes. Uh, you have told many important points and I'm sure it's a kind of privilege today we got to hear all those things from you. So my next question to you is, uh, what values are most important to you as a leader in this new age? Well, it's, it's, when you look at leadership, uh, people ask me, so what are the, what are the, that the competencies leaders must have. I mean, and, and when it comes, and it's underpinned by value, values, which really under, and, and that's that's an attitude thing. Uh, some of the values are taught at a young age, well, like my, most things we're taught, um, and we may be taught the wrong values, but the fact you can understand that and people change, right? We, it depends. Other people are taught the right values from the, the day they were born. So they have it a bit easier up front but it doesn't mean to say they have it all their own way and the others don't have it. I know a lot of people have, have really had a struggle through their early life. They've turned out to be great leaders. And some of them great because of the experiences that they've had, being on the, on the worst side of the fence, if you know what I mean, you know, like uh, disruptive family households and et cetera, et cetera. So you can't use that as an excuse. It can be, it's a factor, but not an excuse. Um, 
but but when you look back to the values, it, it comes back to some of the basic ones, but but they're they're basic ones, like they were basic a thousand years ago, really. It's people need to trust people. And they it's that so it's an integrity thing. You know, looking people in the eye and say, yeah, yeah, and not like not looking or I mean, it's just that connectivity. And when I say trust, mm-hmm. you've got to trust yourself first. Everything comes back to yourself. You can't trust another human being if you don't trust yourself. And then, and some no. people say, yeah, I, I trust myself, but they don't really, because they can always see a negative reason. They don't trust themselves truly to be the best they can be. And so that's it to me that underpins the values and then you get what radiates out is that um, belief uh, and, and the integrity belief and then you move to some of the other values but to me that underpins it all because if people don't trust you that, that's it doesn't matter what else you do people won't trust you right so but you trust yourself first you trust and believe in yourself is the key and then that radiates out then people start to see your sincerity when you're saying something because you really deeply believe in what you're saying. Indeed, sir. Again, um, yeah. again it falls quite inside. I was just going to say one other thing because people say, well, how do you, you know, how do you demand trust? Well, if you don't demand trust, you earn it. One way of earning trust for a leader uh, who's, let's say, new to a team, right, it take, can take your time. It's to keep to be as to, as transparent as you can be up front, and show that you are vulnerable. You do make mistakes. Then people go, "Oh, okay. I, I think I trust this person, right? Because they're open and honest." So all those types of things that that creates the trust. Indeed, sir. Again, your this answer was very uh, quite insightful on many levels. So my next question to you is, uh, or actually this is a very quite obvious question because when we work with the team, uh, the team contains many people from different backgrounds, different genders and different people, all they have their own thinking capacity and all they think, they uh, take the things and think and think uh, in different ways. And which is very quite obvious. So when you work in a team, there are certain types of disagreements you have to face. So sir, my question to you is how to handle disagreements with co-workers? The situation with different, uh, so I didn't quite quite hear you then, it just drifted a bit. So you're looking at situations of different people from different backgrounds, different cultures, etc. Was that the question? Yeah. Well, there again, it, you, you connect with each person. I mean, um, you, you're not leading a team of, you might be leading a team of 20,000, but you've only got seven or eight reports directly reporting to you. And the key is to be very connecting with those seven or eight people in your team, right? That's your, that's your immediate team. So you can connect with them individually, whether they come from India or Africa, the US or Australia, it doesn't really, but the key is you just connect and, you, and, you, and you, you accept them for who they are. You don't judge them, you accept people who they are and you work with what you can with their strengths to grow those people. And so, so whether you, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from, that's not a really a factor. It's a factor in your assessment based on, well, because you're from that country, you're more likely to be having a thought pattern this way, or you're more likely have a bit of a, you know, a like a cultural bent on this particular way, or, or you're from India, you probably like cricket, or, you know, like, or you're from the US, you probably like baseball. Like you, you use the, the information to help you connect with people. At the end of the day, just treat them as people. The, 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 the cultural differences are in, in people's um, programming in their head. It's in their laptop. There's this thing here, it's a laptop, right? It's been having data inputted for years, right? So, and as we all know, whatever you put in the data, whatever you change a bit of data, what comes out of that, right. what comes out in the report is di- different, right? But the fact is, once you understand what's going in, it helps you understand what's going to come out. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, there are differences, um, and, and there's often a, a conversation these days about diversity and, how, and, and those types of things. Well, if you focus on the diversity, you're actually focusing on on the differences. To me, it's to me, it doesn't make so much sense. 
you focus on where the common ground is and then you build from that. To me, and that's there again, that's connecting with everyone and focusing on the common ground. And to me, there's a lot of common ground, doesn't matter where you come from, whether you're male or female, any sort of culture, yeah, you're 65 years of age or you're 25. There are similar similarities and you focus on the things that brings people together, not the differences. That just keeps them all apart, right? That's, that's, that's the way, that's my belief anyway. And that's why I tend to work with uh, when I'm coaching people to understand in that. Indeed, sir, as you have again told that uh, there's a need to find the common grounds and connect with the people. I think this is a great uh, answer which you have uh, given to all of us. And I'm sure many of viewers, those who are watching, they're surely going to find us inside, uh, uh, insightful as well as learning part of this video. So my next question to you is, uh, actually, uh, I have got this question. How do you define leadership failure? Leadership failure. Um... Well, depends depends what you, you're looking at as failure. I mean, all good le- well, I, I no doubt all good leaders will have failures. Right? All leaders have failures, but the good leaders have just as many failures as a bad leader or a bad manager. Just the good leaders learn from those failures. And they're failures they have to have to learn. Reading some in a textbook about this is how you do it you learn substantially more by doing something giving it a try failing learning debriefing and moving on that's how all good leaders tend to really grow and develop it's through their failures that they grow where you get a leadership failure being you're not a leader you're just a manager of a process no one no one follows you at all say so therefore you're not a leader it is managing a process which is a bunch of people doing whatever they're doing, right? You're not actually leading the people, you're just doing. Um, you file at leadership and that'll, that'll all come back to the bottom line is probably that they don't trust you. At the end of the day, that'll come back to they don't trust your competency or they don't trust this or your sense. Like the, it'll come back to a, a few things um, that they just, you haven't earned their trust and therefore they don't, they were saying um, in Australia and India, cricket, they don't go to bat for you because they don't want to. So, and that, that starts the failure in, in managing a team. Indeed, sir. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot more to learn from you, but today I don't want to take too much of your time. So moving to my last question of this session. But actually uh, the question which I have is that uh, when you work uh, with a team, you, have, uh, you need to regularly motivate your team towards their goal, what they have to do. Sir, uh, my question to you is, how would you motivate your team? Because it's one of the most important thing. Yes, it is. Um, so there's, there's four things to, to, to when you're leading a team, right? Uh, or leading people. One, the first thing is they need they need direction. In other words, they need to get, go know where they're going. The next, have they got the skills to get there? If they haven't, what do we need to be trying? training them, development thing. Have I given them all the tools to get there? If I want them to go to London and I don't give them a boat or a plane, it's a bit hard to ask them to swim, right? So the, like I've got to tool them up, I've got to equip them. And the last thing, are they motivated enough to want to do that? They know where they're going, they're skilled enough, they've got all the equipment now, as you said, right? The motivation, do they really want to do it? Now, and, and it's, there again, it's treating people as people and, 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 and people, to be motivated, need to see that they're adding value. They really need to see. People generally like adding value to other things. They like having positive impact on things, right? There's always exceptions. Don't get me wrong, Hush. There's always exceptions to this sometimes. But, but generally speaking, most people will want to create a positive impact in their in their world, their working world, not a negative one. And and I, and I the, the 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 exception would be a very very small. 0.1 percent. I mean, some will have positive, negative impact on their on the working situation, but it's not deep in deep down in their heart. That's not their intent. In their head, yes, I want to do that because I want to get back at those two or three people in the team who are, who are upsetting me. That's their head speaking. But when they really start thinking about what they really feel, 
they don't, they probably go, and they usually go, oh, no, I don't really want that. It, like they change. So that there again, that's connecting to your heart. And that's what a leader does to motivate is connect with people so they can see what value they're adding into what they're doing at, at work, right? Uh, and so, and what they believe their purpose is, is it, is it connecting with the company purpose? And I'm adding the value. I'm actually seeing what good I'm doing. And that's, that's what motivates them to want to keep doing it. Now, the second thing, uh, once they see it, that's the direction. But yes, I need to be skilled to do it. So you're helping developing people. And people like to be developed, particularly um, the younger generations, because they grow up with a changing world rapidly every day. They want to be developed to keep up with that world. Uh, people of my grey hair and my age, yes, they want to be developed, but they, their expectation of development could be a lot longer period. That's what it took to develop us years ago because the world changed a bit slower. So you've got that, got that development. Then you've got, I've, I've equipped them with all the gear. That's great. Now, to motivate them, I've got to keep telling you and, and, and giving you feedback where, where, you're, where you're doing well and where your challenges might be because the challenges help you develop. So you're getting feedback, so you start to see the value you're adding. And that keeps the motivation going. That means you want to do it because you see what you're doing adds value and you're being told, recognized continually by your leader that you, this is, you're adding the value. You're contributing, you're making a difference. Those types of things keeps you motivated. Indeed, sir. Again, it was a very wonderful answer from you, Shad. I'm sure it was a quite uh, insightful part, insightful part. And I'm sure the viewers those who are watching, they are surely going to take many things from this session. Thank you so much, sir, for joining and giving your important time. It was a kind of healthy conversation with you. My the pleasure. Topic. We look forward to conduct more sessions. My pleasure. Today. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah, sir. Thanks for reaching out and uh, asking me the questions. It was great. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you, sir. Thank you so much. On the ground is where I stand Never give up, that was always the plan It's so cold yeah. outside I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone